Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. Down the left and Moy stayed on side. Here's Mounier. 2 0 on a field down on the opening day of the Premier League. 1 2 with Katunga. Here's Moy right footed. 1 0 on a field down. Lindelof misses his header. De Quattro's in. Round De Gea. 2 0 on a field down. 2 0 on a field down. Here's Sanka to turn it into the pass. Yes! Yeah. Tommins scored! <laughs> Tommins has scored! One of the most important goals of Huddersfield Town's history! De oh. has forward, De has got the better yeah. of <laughs> And Laurent De Plattas scores! Laurent De Plattas scores! We're in the lion's den, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the warm-up episode 47. This episode is going to be something to sink your teeth into as we sink our claws as well into Huddersfield's match against Millwall. Joining me, your host, Brady Frost, to preview the match against the Lions is Georgia Cook, who is going to bring some razor-sharp insight to this podcast. How are you, Georgia? Uh, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thanks Thanks for coming on. Um, so, Georgia, some people may recognise you from... Uh, your documentary and your feature on BBC Radio Leeds about sexism in football. Um, can you tell the listeners a little bit more about that? Um, I decided to do a documentary uh, called The Girl With That Dream and it was based on my experience um, in football, being a, like a playing football but mainly on the media side of it and my experience being a journalist, which it's not always been positive but it is getting better now compared to what it was. And this was only in the space of a couple of years. So I thought it was really important for somebody to speak up about what it is like. Because it isn't all sunshine and rainbows, what people think, you know, and they think that just because you're a girl, you know, you're just going to you're gonna get the job because everyone wants, you know, enough women in the game. But it's not, you know, and I never want to be seen as that. I want to be seen of what work I do. And I think that was really important for people like myself to get that out and and prove a point that we want you know we want people to look at us for us for our work and it, yeah it was a documentary that it, it went a lot better than what I thought it was going after it deleted three times um but once it was out and people got to listen to it and got to see it from my perspective I think I had a lot of positivity especially from her game too um they were really really supportive and uh, Dave Edwards from BBC um whose idea it was to put it on Look North parts of it so yeah it, it was really successful thank you that's great and obviously we always tag our, our guests in so uh, anyone who wants to check that out that is on george's twitter feed so uh, i would recommend um yeah <laughs> thank you right. no problem um so also george you are a town fan it's good to always get town fans on can you um what have been some of your favorite memories uh following town well you've got to mention the playoff final you know that's a that is an absolute classic it's one that will definitely remain with me for the rest of my life I remember I was a uh, I was crying because it was just after the the terrorist attack at, at the Manchester bombing and um I was just I was so upset and it was in the in the one or two minute silence and I was I was crying and they zoomed right into my face and I had people messaging me saying you're on the telly you're on the telly but it was like, I was just, it's one of them where it had so much more meaning because of something like that. And um, I think that made it even more special because we were a Northern team anyway. And, you know, we'd, we'd won and it was so, it was great for the club and that team was so special. And I think any game within, you know, the Preston game um, that um, when Moy missed his penalty and then uh, Colin came and scored, you know, that, that was, that was great. And I think a lot of a lot of them games from that kind of season is what what you what you stick with, obviously. But in the Premier League, you know, we had some we had some great games like the Man U two one and the Chelsea one one and Man City nil nil. You know, they're games that we thought we'd get absolutely hammered, and to see it live and hopefully see it again. But if I don't, I was very happy with with what we saw being a Town fan. But I've not I'm not going to sit here and be like. 
I've been a town fan since I was four, you know, it took me a long time to get into football, but I'm so glad that I chose Huddersfield because I've seen it up and down, up and down, you know, it's not a Premier League team that you just sit and you, you, you know, you maintain for the season. So I'm, I'm really glad that I picked Huddersfield when I did. Yeah, and uh, well, let's be honest, we all picked the playoffs because it was a great time. And uh, <laughs> to be honest, there's not always been a lot of great times following town. No, I mean, the Chef Wednesday penalty shootout was good as well. Tense, but... but oh, really yeah, yeah, good. yeah, always. <laughs> Thank you, Forestieri, as always, for that. Um, anyway, we'll, t- we'll talk a little bit about this game because we're playing Millwall. Um, so they're level on points for Huddersfield, 21 points. Uh, they actually sit 10th in the table, Huddersfield sit 8th. Um, they've got five wins, six draws and three losses in, in 14 matches. Um, obviously, we're play- it's a home fixture. Uh, I was looking at their lineups kind of in the away matches uh, this season and they tend to line up in like a 3-4-3 or a 3-4-2-1. Obviously, Huddersfield like to play 3-4-3, as we know. Um, I love I like my stats, Georgia, so anyone who listens to this will enjoy the stats. But um I've got to love a good start. Exactly. It's all the best. <laughs> um, but town need to be on the lookout because um particularly towards the end of matches, because Millwall have scored 15 goals, but nine of those have come in the last half an hour of the game. So uh <laughs> when we tend to switch off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fitting in already. Um so I'll come to you, George, actually, because Millwall, when they're playing away from home, they tend to kind of sit in a low block and it they can be hard to break down. Um, what what do you think Town need to do in this match? I think what we lacked um, in the game before Bournemouth was we just, we seemed to switch off. There was no energy in the game. It was very, like, content. And I, and I just didn't like that. It was against Birmingham. We just... We just kind of watched the game go on and it was really frustrating because we're all shouting, attack, attack, attack. Mm. And I remember um, Nichols had the ball and it was in about the 85th minute and he, it was as if like we were 1-0 up, you know, taking his time. And I thought, we haven't got a lot of time. And we like Nichols tends to do that a lot. Yeah, when we're winning, fine. But when we're at a nil-nil draw and we really need the three points, we just switch off. There's no attack. There's... There's no energy and it just seems to just be plain. And I think it reminded me of watching when we had Jan Siever, mm. you know, that kind of game. It, and I thought, oh, my God, please do not go back to that. And even at the beginning of the season, it was kind of, let's try play it safe. And against a team like Birmingham, where they they are at at the minute, we should be beating them. Like, we beat Hull, but we just don't seem to be trying hard enough I don't think um, I didn't really expect us to beat Bournemouth because of how well they are doing and it's no doubt they're probably going to win the, win the league and go up to mm. Premier League um, but we we should have beaten Birmingham I think it was a beatable game and I just think that we were I don't know if it, we were tired or, or um, like I was happy to see Sorber back in the lineup because I didn't think he had a, a good game against Hull. Um, I think he was just very mediocre, but I think he played really well against Birmingham. And I think he was one of the only players that I thought he's put in a, a good shift, you know, because I was really disappointed in him. And barely anybody stayed to clap because we just, what was it? You know, it, it reminded me of kind of watching Sunday League. You know, it was just very boring. You know, and I, and I hate talking about him negatively because I just, I don't like it. But for me, watching that, it was just very, oh, hey, we're back at it again. You know, there's no attacking. And we were promised to be attacking with Carlos. And I just didn't see any of that against Birmingham. No, I was I was at the game. I, I completely agree with that. Um, I was, I was going to ask, actually, because I always am keen to ask this when we have a new guest on. What have you made of, of Carlos Corbran? Um, you know, do you, do you like his style and how he's got Huddersfield playing? I think the circumstance where Danny left, um, for a lot of people that liked Danny, like myself, it I was annoyed and I didn't understand what Carlos was going to bring. Mm. And I think it took him a long time to actually prove what he brought to the club. Whereas with Danny, within the first couple of months, we went on, was it 11 unbeaten run um, mm. around October time? Um, and with Carlos, nothing seemed to just be coming. It just seemed very, oh, you know, we're watching him again, especially in the lockdown as well. Mm-hmm. We couldn't we couldn't 
see it for ourselves we could on the telly but being there I think is completely different you know you have the impact from the fans and I think it was hard for Carlos but he just didn't seem to prove himself and get the results that a lot of managers when they come in do you know the team didn't really play up for him but I think the transfer window that we had has really helped you know bring in Dwayne I think Dwayne's been good since we've had him and Danny I think it took Danny quite not a long time but it took him a few quite a few games to get you know back into the Huddersfield way because it had been different when he'd been gone um but I think he's starting to prove fans wrong now that you know he has still got it and he, he can change the game and he he, has, he did um a few weeks ago but I just think we've got to trust Carlos I wasn't his biggest fan if I'm completely honest until um about the end of August I just thought Ugh. You know, he reminded me of a Jan Seaver because mm. we were getting no results. And I thought, has nobody learned, you know? Mm. And to see him finally get results, I feel happy for him because I was wondering, like, is this going to be it now? You know, his job must be hanging by a thread, you know? Um, but I'm happy to see him get results. I'm happy with the team, where the team's at now. Um, I just think we need to push for the smaller results like Birmingham. Um, and grab the points when we can. Mm. No, I, I think that's I think that's a really good point. Like you say, I have got a stat for you. Actually, we've oh, not beaten on, we've not beaten Birmingham at home since 1997. Oh really? Yeah, that's a stat for you. Wow, there we go. We needed you on the Birmingham preview then. There we yeah, go. <laughs> that's it. I wouldn't have had it. It was Birmingham night. One of uh, the fans of us was like, "Did you know?" I was like, "No, not till you tell me." <laughs> so, didn't know. They're good to see. Um, obviously, we, we are proving uh, Millwall in this one. And um, Millwall, I think, are one of those teams that, like we kind of alluded to, they're always difficult to to break down. Um, we normally ask for a key player at this point, so I, I'll just jump in. I've actually gone for the goalkeeper for Millwall, uh, Bierkowski, um, just because I think he's one of the best in the league, um, really. And uh, I, don't, I think this is going to be a bit of a frustrating game. We've talked about Birmingham a bit, and it, I can kind of see it being a bit similar unfortunately um which is great because i'm off to that so uh <laughs> if that's what it's going to be like that'll be fun um <laughs> but town i don't think they're gonna have many opportunities but when they do um he is a good keeper and i think he'll be very key you know for the chances we do get um yeah. and he might have some joy in this one i think it's gonna be a bit of a tough one but what about you georgia who did you single out from Millwall as a key player See, mine was really difficult. It was between ex-town player Scott Malone um, or Tom, uh, Tom Bradshaw. And I f- I'm going to have to go with Scott Malone because every time we, we play him or like play against him, there's all, it always seems a bit more fiery. I don't, I don't know why, but there's just... I know it's an ex-player, but even like with ones we've seen, it's never been like when we play against Scott Malone. And... Mm. I feel like he is playing so much different at Millwall compared to what he did for us. And I mean, it's always nice to see a town player do well, but not when you're against them because you're just like, oh, why did we, you know? But for how we played against us, he was he wasn't as as good as what he is now. But like you said, it's going to be very very difficult to break Millwall down. I think whenever we play Millwall, it's a it's a very difficult game, um, especially when we're at the Den. So. Um, I think making sure that we've everybody is attacking as much as possible. And like you said, when we get them chances, making sure we try and execute them because that's a problem at the minute. We're not executing as, as many as what we should be. We're, I know it's unfortunate hitting the post, putting them just wide, but it's then where you've just got to take an extra, an extra step or, you know, just dribble it a tiny bit more and then you, you're going to get that chance, but it's just rushed. You know, just just take a tiny bit of time, you know, and I think that will help when we're in a game like this, when you're not going to get many chances, because you don't just want to be putting it wide, and, you know, over the bar, because then you're going to be like, well, we're not going to get a chance for another 15, 20 minutes. And it's all that frustration that's building up. And then it's like, oh, I've hit the post. And then they're frustrated even more. So I think that's just being calm and collected when you are taking, taking a chance. I think that's a really good point, because the... <laughs> Although we have had a good start to the season, I think just given how bad the second half to the mm-hmm. season was uh, in the previous campaign, when, you know, a bit of a disappointing result against Birmingham, 
like you said earlier, we weren't expecting anything to get away from Bournemouth, but I feel like Town could really do with a, a win in this game or, you know, a good performance just to, like you mm-hmm. say, you're talking about frustration. I think if it's another kind of Birmingham, then, you know, we haven't won in, in three. Yes, it's two points, but this does feel like we could, we could, this is, you know, I wouldn't say it's an easy game, but we could, Town could certainly win this if they go out and perform well. Um, and I think you've, you're right. This is like, it's all about being calm and collective. And, you know, we want to see Town break, break teams down. You know, they, they have all struggled historically with that. And um, I, th- I think that's, um, I think that's spot on. Um, but we are, like you say, we are a Huddersfield Town podcast. Um, who have you picked as a key player for Town in this one? Do you th- is it is it attacker to kind of break them down? I think Nichols and Toffolo are going to be key. Mm. Mainly Toffolo, in my opinion. He's got the enthusiasm that the team needs. He's quick. He's there when you need him. You know, you turn around and Toff's there. He, I think he's quite a good leader when he needs to be. Um, even though, obviously, Jonathan Hogg is captain, he still has the captain traits that I think a lot of people miss. You know, he's very organised and it, his team works really good um, and his communication. So I think getting balls into the box is going to be, like you said, really important. Um, and I think he is the one to push for, for us to get up the pitch, especially against a team like this. He always seems... Um, to to want to do really well um, by getting us up and but making sure that we're not being caught when you know they are on the attack. So I think Toffolo for me is going to be the most important, which is strange because we need to score goals, but I do think they they can come from Toff. So I um, I mean I really like Toff anyway. So I think that I think he's a very underrated player, um, considering where he came from, Lincoln. Um, and he's now playing such good football. And yeah, he's, um, Dan, like Danny Cowley brought him in, but I think he's developed more under Carlos and maybe the people that have been brought in and the, the way that they play. So I think that is really important in a game get like Millwall to make sure we get up, get the ball into the box, but not be caught on an attack. Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point. Um, Toffolo, I think he's not at the... The best season so far, but I think you, you've talked about it there. He's he's a very good player for town, and he sets high high standards. Um, so we are used to seeing good performances because he's consistently putting them in. And I think this is a good point you say about the crosses. You know, Mill will have some big big lads at, uh, at the back, but you know, I think we know what Toff can do when he can get crosses in. And you know, um, I think that's a really good shout. I, I've I've gone for. Um, he hasn't started. Uh, didn't start against uh, Bournemouth, but I think he'll come back in for this one. I've gone for Daniel uh, Daniel Sanani. Um, bit of an interesting one for me. Because he was he was on mine as well. I, I noticed it when he didn't start for Bournemouth. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've gone for him for this because I think because there's been a week since um, no, there have been weeks since uh, the Bournemouth and, and this game. I, I wonder. He's played a lot of international f- football in between the kind of international breaks. And I, I feel with him, he needs a goal or he needs a, an assist. And I think he'll start kind of get going. And I do wonder if they bring him back in for this game, if it's a good, you know, I, I think I've said this on a couple of previous shows, but I feel like he just needs to get a, go, a goal and he'll, um, he'll get running. And I wonder if it's going to be this game because we know he likes to drift in and, you know, create space for others. And he has a good shot. He's been a bit unlucky um, with some of his shots recently. So, this is more like hoping, uh, kind of willing him to have a good game, but I, I fancy him to score on this one. I, I will keep. I really like him. Score. I think I think he just needs, like you said, a goal. And I've been saying this. I think people are too easy to write players off. And if you see how he plays, and you know the the enthusiasm he has to the game, you will see how much he brings to the team. Like everybody has a bad game. He didn't have a good game against Birmingham, which is a possible reason why they didn't play for Bournemouth. Um, but I think if, like you said, giving him like drifting in um, and making sure that he, because sometimes he, he tends to come back a little bit, you know, and, more, and play a little bit more defensive rather than attacking. And I think that that brings out the worst side of him because when he's attacking, you know, he's, he's on fire, even though he's not scoring, he's always pushing them back and pushing them back. And I think if we see that kind of side of him, 
we got we're gonna have a very good game against Millwall. And obviously with it being remembrance like the remembrance game, I think that brings like for me a lot of like, you know, Millwall fans technically and are known for, you know, to to be loud and we've had um like it always makes me a bit oh, you know, when we have a very loud team at re- remembrance games. But I think that will play a big part because they are want gonna want to be loud, you know. Um, but we have to make sure that we are we are pushing um to, to get the goal, like you said, and make sure that we're not on the back foot all the time. Because that's another thing that we, we can tend to do, especially in the last half an hour, go on the back foot. Say if we are one nil up or even if we're at nil nil, we go on the back foot and then we're like, oh, we've we've been caught. And people like they, they look surprised, but as fans, you see that and you think a goal's coming now for them. But it's like they are unaware of that happening. So I think they just need to be switched on for that because Millwall, like you said, have scored, what was it, nine in the last half an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah no. Which c- can be very dangerous. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely. We, we um, well, you, you're making me feel nervous for this now, George. I feel it's going to be a bit like Forest where. Uh, it, you know they'll kind of do an, uh, do a job on us, but um, we'll we'll we will see anyway. <laughs> we'll see anyway. Um, we're gonna so there's no view from the other side this week. Um, so we'll move on to back in time. This is normally Josh's section. Um, so I was looking at kind of this is where we look at previous fixtures. Um, so since 2019, we've only won once um, against Millwall, which was the three 0 away win uh, this time last year. Uh, at the den, uh, so you know, similar time, Halloween, maybe, maybe there's something in the, you know, in the water. Um, we've actually, we've what? So we played them quite a few times. We won 22, drawn seven, and lost 20 in the head-to-head. But the game I picked as our memorable game was uh, Huddersfield Town two, Millwall one, which was the 27th of September 2014. Um, it was a brace from Naki Wells. And this actually gave uh, then the town boss, Chris Powell, his first win uh, as, as Terry's boss. Um, and it dragged us out of the relegation zone. So um, people who listen to this will know I'm a big fan of Naki Wells. Um, maybe... I'll be a fan of Naki Wells. Exactly. Everybody loves Naki. Who doesn't love Naki? Bring him back. That's what I say, George. I want him back. Bring him back. Well, we've brought Heath back, so it's not impossible. Exactly. We the town love to bring a former player back, don't they? So um, yeah. we'll make it happen. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's a bit of an inch. Well, as people know, uh, Chris Powell was maybe not the, the favourite town manager on, uh, for quite a few of us on the pod, but we'll we'll move on because speaking of back in time, it's return to the Mac time. Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. The Pucks has got the better yes! <laughs> and Laurent the Pucks has scored! What a goal, Aaron Moy! An absolute thunderbolt delivered all the way from Australia! Returns in a match. So, Georgia, uh, you're the guest, so you can go first. Uh, which former town player are you bringing back for this one and why? You see, mine's already back. Um, it it would be Michael Heffley. Um, and I was ecstatic when he came back in. Anyone who's watching the podcast that actually knows me will have said Michael Heffley before I even opened my mouth because you know how much I love him. Um, I think he, as people describe him, he's a cheerleader. You know, he brings so much positivity to a, to a team like no player I've ever known. You know, he's so fan orientated and. You know, he, he adores this club. And I think for a player to come back, be a club ambassador, you know, want to help the community. Oh, I just I just think he's great. You know, I just I feel proud of him for coming back for some reason. I feel like for a player to do that, it shows how dedicated they were in the first place. And for him to be released under the circumstance, you know, when he injured his knee against Birmingham um, in, in the cup, I think that was the kind of, right, he's going to go now, you know, and that was the kind of sign-off point for him. But he never gave up on Huddersfield. You know, he'd always check in and, you know, he'd post all these tweets about how much he'd miss Huddersfield. I think if you've got a player who has been released and still loves the club, there's something special about that. And he's come back, he's helping the academy, 
it loves being around the fans and for me that is something that I want in a player even though he's not playing anymore but I want in someone at, the, at my club so um and you know when we got promoted he was here and even though he missed, missed the penalty at Wembley and I was absolutely heartbroken um and didn't I didn't watch the rest of the penalty shootout because I was it was through tears in my eyes um I'm really happy to have him back and I think that has played part in the way that the first team have been more more po- I think they've been more positive recently compared to last season and I think Hef has a part to play in that not not all of it of course but I think his humor and the way that he brings himself um has played a part in that what about you yeah, I think that was a really good point. Very clear, you like Heffler. I mean, who doesn't like, who doesn't like <laughs> Hef? He's a good lad, isn't he? Um, yeah, I, I think um, you're right, that enthusiasm. And um, he'd never give up, did he, as we uh, we all saw with uh, the winner against Leeds United. Probably oh. that's one of my favourite moments uh, in recent times. Yeah, mine was, my dad's a Leeds fan, so... <laughs> oh, even better. Even yeah. better, there you go for you. Um, I, I've So I've gone for... I don't think this player is now going to win the Twitter poll where we put these two head to head. Um, I've gone for Jacob Butterfield. I know he didn't end on the best <laughs> terms, but um, he was our player of the season in 2014, 2015. Um, created eight assists in that um, in that uh, season and scored six. And I just I just think because Millwall are going to be difficult to break down, I think he's the type of player we could really use at the moment. Um, so yeah. yeah, I've gone for Jacob Butterfield, but. I already know he's not going to beat Hef. So uh, that is good. Yeah, they, this is what the guests <laughs> Maybe have got to if do. You put Naki, if you'd have brought Naki back, then it, I think it would have been a bit closer. Uh, but... I brought Naki back last week. Can't can't keep bringing him back. Oh. That's what happens when you're a host. Um, <laughs> clearly, clearly got it wrong. But um, we will, uh, yeah, don't think I'm going to win that one anyway. Um, <laughs> but we'll move on to you're the boss. So... Um, Georgia question. So you're in charge. So let's say Carlos Corbran can't make it to the dugout on Saturday. You're in charge. First question, which again I always ask the new guests, is if you're the manager, what? Uh, how are you going to dress up in the dugout? Because that's that's the most important question we need to know. Are you going to suit? Are you going to track suit? Oh, I'd have to. I love dressing up. You got to. You got to be in a suit. You know. Yeah. You got. You got. You got to be smart. Um. Yeah. Smart. Some nice shoes. Um, hair back in a in a little bun, so then mm. people think I'm being very serious. Um, and I think I'd present myself to be very like don't won't really want to talk to anyone to give away anything. I'd be like, yes, you know, yeah. meet them and leave. I like that. Sets the tone. Sets the tone. Very professional. Um, but how how <laughs> how are you going to line up? Um, Huddersfield. Then, if you're in charge, are you going to go for the same formation, same players? Same for uh, yeah, same formation. Um, but I'd take Oli Turton out. Yeah. Uh, just, I didn't. I just don't understand. Like, is he seems a lovely person, but f- starting him over Sanani, you know, it. I don't understand. I know Bournemouth for more attacking, but you've got Sanani who's very attacking. So, um, I'd take Oli Turton out and uh, bring Sanani in, and maybe. Campbell for Ward, and I know that, that's not going to upset a few people, but um, I think Danny Ward has been really good recently. And I think even though he's not, he hasn't, he didn't score against Birmingham, he still played very well, uh, really attacking, you know, chasing the ball down. And for a team at like Bournemouth, I didn't understand why we didn't we didn't play Danny Ward. So, um, like you said, it's kind of the same against Millwall, having to break these barriers down. My only worry about taking Ollie Turton out is how attacking Millwall are going to be and will we need to play a bit more defensive. But I'm going to go with my gut and uh, take Turton out and bring Sanani in and take Campbell out and bring Ward in. Yeah, I think it's a good point about Ward. Um, I know Ward is, um, you know, some, you know, maybe not, lived up to some town fans' expectations. But what I would say this season is he's been very good at home. Obviously, he's got two against Blackburn, uh, scored against Reading. So I think that's a good shout. I feel um, in terms of my lineup, uh, not much has changed. I bring Colwell back in, I think, just because he's, he's served his ban uh, for, for getting five yellow cards. Um, uh, the interesting one was Sorba, not because I don't think, I always think Sorba should play because he's been so good this season, but... 
I just think he looks a little bit tired against Bournemouth. Um, so I wonder if you rest yeah. him. I actually think maybe we'll rest him against Peterborough in midweek. So, yeah, I've got Nichols, Pearson, Lees, Colwell, Thomas, Hogg, O'Brien, Toff, Sinani, Ward and Karoma. Uh, I want to see a little bit more from Karoma this season. Uh, I think yeah. I about it quite a little bit, but um, that's just, again, because we know how good he was last season. And it's still early days. Um, I always think if a player does well, people expect him like. For- I know it's not Huddersfield, but more Salah. You know, he had that season and then everyone's like, oh my God, why is he not as good as last season? But just because you have a, you could have a really, really good season, but everyone, like, same with Ward, he's come back and he's not been the same, but mm. he's still trying to get into... It's a different style now, different manager, different players, and they're just still having to adapt to that. And I think people aren't giving him enough time. If it was Hogg, for example, who was, you know, still in this position, I'd understand where people are coming from, or O'Brien... And tough, but Karoma, I think, is going to be a, a very good player in the future if we look after him and, you know, we, we push him, but not too much. And I agree with the Sauber comment, uh, resting him for Peterborough. I think Millwall is too big to rest him, um, but for a game against Peterborough where they're not as attacking, um, I think we, sh- we should rest him for that and maybe uh, play Campbell instead. But... Um, no, I pretty much agree with your lineup as well. Yeah, and I think to be fair, with with players like Karoma and, and Ward, um, they could, some of them could go on a run. You know, we've seen what Karoma can do last season, and all it takes for them is to get you know, you know, a couple of goals. Like they could get a goal this game, they could score against Peterborough, and then suddenly you you know it's all it's all fine, and you know we're all ready to go and winning games again. And I don't think that's a ridiculous thing to say, you know, because we know what Karoma can do and, you know, Ward, Ward can score, you know. <laughs> he's, you know, yeah. he's know, it's not like season. he's never scored. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the same with what we were saying with Sonani earlier, like he just needs a run. And to be honest, I think any of those front three, they, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they did go on a run. So fingers crossed it's for uh, for this game anyway. This is the start. But um, we'll finish up then, Georgia. Um, we'll, we'll always finish with a match prediction. So, how do you see this game going? And what's your score prediction? I see uh, Millwall being the more attacking side. Um, but our home record isn't too bad. So, oh, it's so hard. Um, no, I'm changing my mind. No, I'm not because I'll jinx it. Um, I think Millwall are going to be more attacking. I think we're going to hold a good defence uh, if we bring Colwell back in. I'd probably take Sarah out um, hmm. just because I think Levi kind of holds that position a little bit better um, I think we need to not be afraid I think that's a massive thing not be afraid to just you know get into them and, and show them w- what we can do um, and not be afraid of Millwall um, so I think I think it's going to be 1-1 one, one. I think it's going to be a End to end game, but one on. I hope. <laughs> um, I I can I have gone for exactly the same. I think um, Millwall. We just well the game I went back to twenty fourteen. That's the last time we beat them at home. Um, they're a really difficult team to play against, and that's a bit obvious. And they do get a lot of draws. Um, Gary Row it seems to be a bit of a draw specialist. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just. They're on the same points as us, you know, and I know quite a few teams are, but they're a good side and, you know, they've got some good wins, you know, like Sheffield United and um, beat Stoke, you know, and Stoke are a good team as we've seen. And yeah, yeah. I, just, I just think this has got 1-1 one, one written all over it. And I would take that provided we can. Yeah, I would say I'd take that as well. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, I think it's not losing points, but getting them when you can, I think hmm. um, is what we need to go for this season mainly hopefully winning, but not losing points where we don't have to lose them. Like, we shouldn't have lost them against Birmingham. Bournemouth, you know, was expected, but, you know, Peterborough, I think we could win. But it's making sure that we're not just writing games off, like everybody wrote Bournemouth off. And I'm sure the, some of the players would have thought, we're not going to beat them, you know. But it's not thinking that about every single game. You know, it's about standing up, being brave against Millwall, getting a foot in, you know, taking some risky challenges that, you know, could pay off, but obviously not being sent off. 
Um, and because Millwall will do that, yeah. you know, and, you know, a lot of the time they will get away with it because they know it's going to be a feisty game. Any game that you play against Millwall is a feisty game, but it's making sure that we just don't get walked all over because that is sometimes what happens when we play Millwall. No, spot on, spot on, Georgia. But, you know, um, we're both going to the game, so fingers crossed we, we see a win. I think that would just calm everyone down a little bit if we just got a yeah. win. <laughs> Definitely. Lovely. Well, yeah, I think that's it from us. Um, Georgia, thanks so much for coming on. Um, Thank you for letting me come on. No problem. No, I'm, I'm sure we'll get you back. I've, uh, I feel it's like great. you made me positive, so that's, uh, that's good. <laughs> and I'm sure it's the same for the listeners. So, um, yeah, thanks for listening. We'll be back um, to preview the next game. So uh, tune in then. Oh, what a night Late in May in 2017 Shinder scored, it was a heavy dream What a feeling, what a night Oh, what a night Wagner singing, we are Premier League Greatest sights in Georgia Square did see What an evening, what a night Oh, I I got a funny feeling when he walks And a fence And then The commentator yelled he takes that chance Lost so safe in mesmerizing me Low, low charge and flattened all Chelsea Stanford Bridge, oh what a night Oh I I got a funny feeling when he wore an offense Commentator yelled, he takes our chance.